Good morning, Park Point members. Um, this is Sabrina. I miss you guys. I'm still working and I've never done this before, so I'm in office. So I'm going to do today, but I was able to ask. Um, we are doing everything on the floor, so the things you might need is either paper towels or dryer sheet um, to do some moving patterns with the floor, a mat, of course, a Band, and if you don't have a band, use a towel and or, okay, you switch out. A ball, if you don't have a ball, just uh, use a throw pillow, something light and circular. A weight, um, I'm using a weighted ball, but anything in your cupboard will do that has some weight to it. Um, not too heavy, not too light, and something that you can do if it's too heavy, you won't go as far. If it's too light, you'll definitely just do moving patterns or um, mobility training. And then if you have tubing, grab that. It's, it's whether you want to use it or not. And of course, I said a band, right? A little band. And if you don't have that, just don't go without it. Okay, I'm going to put all this stuff aside, and then we're going to start warming up. Um, you're going to lay down on your back. Um, I'm going to use a massage table to use the floor. I'm taking, I took notes because I want to make sure I cover as much stuff as I possibly can. And you're going to start by laying down on your back. Okay? Lengthen out your hips. So put your hands on your hips. Put your uh, thumb on your rib cage. Take a breath. Open up the sides of the rib ribs and just put an X here at the front of the ribs and try to keep that from popping up and over breathing from your belly. You want belly breath, but you don't want to arch your back up by putting too much there. Start working on lung capacity, especially these days, and really open up on the sides of the rib cage and in the back. Okay, space between your rib cage and hip. And let's just start by just lifting one leg up and just observe the leg. Whether you might have any type of uh, tightness in the hip joint, pop, clicks, cracks, um, I would bend my knee more, keep it a little softer, and look slower and less reps. Okay? Anytime you're on this video and you want to work on something, you could pause it and work a little longer. Okay, I'm going to float through stuff as much as I can. And let's switch legs and same thing, lift them lower. Take your hands on your hips, check your anchor points, making sure that you are not arching your back or trying to exaggerate. Remember, this is a warm up, not to see how far you can go. So just to work on mobility. Okay, and let's do a couple more of those. Work on inhaling and exhaling through the rib cage right now. And let's take this right leg and just simulate a bicycle. On this bicycle, I want you to really work on the up more than the out, especially if you have problematic backs where your back feels everything. I slow it down. Um, I'm not looking for that clicking, cracking, snapping, popping. I'll really slow it down and make it smaller so that my joints feel more mobile than tense. Okay, and then let's switch legs. Again, we're just warming up. And so you're observing your body. My body on the left loves to tilt sideways. So I'm constantly working on keeping that from just dropping and twisting and turning. Just notice things about yourself and what you do. Not bad or good, just things that you have habits of always doing. Okay, and then observe what leg likes it and which leg feels way too tired, shaky or which is it didn't have to do it. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna face sideways and pedal a bike this way. If you have a pillow here for the side of your hip, use it. And I'm just working on extension to the front, keeping my knee mobile. Okay. And same thing, other leg. So you're gonna face I was hoping you wouldn't have to see my backside, but here we go. And again, just kind of mobilizing. And you can add a soft pointer flex. 
mobilizing your ankles too. So the hip, the knee, and the ankle are pretty relaxed as they're moving. Muscles in your thighs might be getting tired. Good. And then face back to the front, and let's put them both together. Sometimes I'll put a ball between some part of your legs, and then so, and same thing here. I'm working more on extension. I'm also looking to see, does one leg go all over the place, the other one stays still, or the other one moves? Can you keep them coordinated together? And how does that affect your abs? If you have back issues, I definitely wouldn't be way out here, all right? I would be more up. When I'm up, I'm working more on my abdominals and keeping that rib cage hip alignment. Okay, and then release that. And then we're going to just bend the knees and let's do some nice arm circles. Open that up. Feel if your shoulders, if my shoulders are tight, I get one side that's tight. I will um, roll before I do stuff like this. Let's go back and forward. And on the forward, just stop at the chest line. And then no, uh, make a note of, are you tight on one shoulder? Do you tend to squeeze your shoulder to your neck? And don't go back as far. This also can be used to towel here, if you like. And then observe your scapula, your shoulder blades. And again, my rib cage doesn't pop up when I go back, all right? I keep that stable and work with my breath on the side and in the back of my rib cage. Okay, same thing out here to the side. And shoulder blades. Does one shoulder blade seem to go in a lot faster than the other? Focus on the slower arm, the one that the scapula doesn't work as fast. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's the pain side. And then open at a diagonal, same thing. So one of my arms, my palms are gonna face up. And I'll exhale as I go down. But I don't necessarily, because this is a warm up, you can inhale and change that up, all right? Just give it a breathing pattern. And then here we go, give it a windmill. So my windmill is gonna be a little higher so that I don't um, over tighten or shrug into my neck. So I'm going exactly where I have nice mobile movement in that shoulder, all right, in the round of humerus. Okay, and palms are facing up, not too fast, not too slow, and coordinate those arms together. And take it up and arm circles on the ceiling. Um, palms face towards each other. Fingertips uh, slightly soft. Take both legs up nice and easy. And then coordinate your legs with it. Keep your abdominals tight. If I feel like that's too much pressure for my back or it doesn't feel good to me, then I would bend my knees. I slow it down. I look for things like, why is my left going fast and my right's going slow? Or why are my legs going slow but my arms are circling faster? So I want you to attach a string to the knee, to the wrist, and again, coordinate them together. Same thing other direction. I want you to notice that your shoulders and hip ball socket joints are nice and lubricated and not tight and release take a break okay so that was our warm-up and so now sorry if i'm looking at my notes but i want to make sure i get everything in for you and so now we're going to work on um you can um add a band so we can off the side you can add a band and or not use a band at first. So what we're going to do is send one leg in, extend it up, and slowly lower it down. Now, again, you're working on that hip rib connection. You do a couple of those. You could go ahead, do the same thing by adding a band and making it more of a workout. 
extend it up and slowly down or in slight kick up when it's with a band you're not going all the way to extension you're just trying to fire up that quadricep leg i kind of mobilize my knee i don't tense it in the back of my knee and extend and lower okay let's do that so again this doesn't require a band and if my band is limiting me then i might just make this whole move smaller just to get this quadricep and touch the leg guys touch the hips touch the leg check out and see what goes on do you get it too much in the hip flexor or psoas then take the band off don't don't sit there and put yourself into a place that doesn't need to be worked out like this second and same thing other leg extend and again and i might take this off first do a couple where my left leg is shaky and bring it out and then i will hook up my band and try a couple that way and exertion is exhale so i'm going to exhale right in here where it's the hardest and bring it down okay this is pretty hard too so that might be a longer exhale about a four count inhale four count down And let's give that about two more. And one more time. Good, we're gonna switch. I have the band on, but you don't have to have a band. I'm gonna rotate my right foot out to about one or two o'clock, and I'm just gonna lift, hold this for 10 seconds. I'm trying to keep my hip alignment and my rib cage, so I'm not arching, my Upper back isn't off the pad. I can breathe well. I just can feel, and you can touch the inside of your leg, your adductor muscles. Just feel those kind of turn on without tightening up into your hip joints or back. And then lower it down and then repeat that. It's an exhale as you come up. They give me some slow breathing where you're not tensing up your um, hips, hip or back, but those muscles are just getting tired on the inner thigh and lower it down. Again, it's an exhale and I'm doing roughly five to six reps, six to 10 reps on everything. But again, pause it and go longer and then turn it back on when you're ready to go on. And you're gonna make sure when you do this that you don't squeeze the backside of your hips my abs should be long. I don't over flatten my lower part of my abdominals until my back is so compressed into the pad that it pulls my neck up. Okay, so you want to avoid that. Let's go to the other leg. Same thing. Adductor, square up your hips, touch them to square, don't rely on your brain. Check your rib cage, is it twisting? And then lower it down. Again. We acquire some bad habits, guys, and we get ourselves a little bit out of alignment to work harder. And I think alignment should come first. Maybe breathing comes next, and then controlling the move, feeling the move exactly where you want to. And again, make sure you're not squeezing things in the back that are laying down and resting. And again. Good, and holding about five or 10 seconds. Check your outer thigh. My inner thigh won't work very hard if my outer thigh is controlling my move. So you might have to go a little bit lighter so that your inner thigh will make that move. And exhale as you bring it up. And lower it down. And a couple more times. And lower. And one more time. And up. Square up your hips. Square up your rib cage. And release. And take that band off. Let go of your legs. 
Actually, let's take that fan and bring it up like so, okay? And then I'm just gonna have you bring your arms up, steady your core, just take your right leg out and slow motion, bring it in. Take your left leg out and slow motion. And I want you to imagine, I don't want you to make this hard or see how far you can go. So right now I'm using my outer thigh and, but really I'm gonna imagine that I'm on a balance beam and I'm keeping my core or I'm on the foam roller. Of course my arms wouldn't be up if I was on the foam roller. And I'm trying to steady my core more than anything as I aid it out. Okay. Those of you who want to make it harder, go into leg extension. All right. But again, don't see how far you can go. It's actually harder when you don't go far. Good. And let's do um, just keeping that little tension on the band. And let's do corkscrew circle. You could do this in a bent knee, or you could do this in a straight leg. As you do this, maintain the quality of your ab and spine control. Okay, don't tense up, don't squeeze the sides of your cheeks, and um, put that pressure on your lower back. And then same thing, other direction, corkscrew circle, sacrum down, natural arch, Long abs, strong abs, space between the hip and rib cage. All right, work on better breathing and release, let that go. All right, you guys, take your band off, shake out those legs. Okay, I'm gonna get up and we're gonna grab either the, you're grabbing paper towels or grabbing dryer sheets. So it's a movement pattern. I thought this would be good for those aqua people. And let's do that next. So you're going to go like a prone position on your belly. I absolutely don't need the paper towels, even though I thought I'd grab some. But I'll tell you what I looked during up. I'll grab a couple of tissues. Oh, no, there they are. Okay. So we're going to be on our belly this direction. Okay. And... What I want you to do, hopefully I can be shown there, is just start by doing some narrow back pull. So I'm gonna pull this down, take the rib cage in the front and put an X on it, put a stitch on it, keep that stitch engaged, all right? So I'm not trying, I'm just trying to do a movement pattern for you and I'm not trying to, um, uh, see what you can do in a cobra, how high you can lift up. Tuck your chin in. And also, you are so welcome to put your, you know, your forehead down, maybe take your towel and roll it up. And I'm going to move this away from me, and I'm just going to go a little wider. Just you'll have more floor space. Tuck your chin. Stretch the back of your neck. And it's going to be an exhale and an inhale. And now I'm going to bring my forehead down. And just try to move my shoulder blades. And then arm circles. And then feel your lats. Move out and back in. Work with your breath. And the other way. And you know, we, we would do this with the gliders at the club. Circle the other way. We do this with no shrugging. So everything around my deltoid cap doesn't feel like it's pinching into my neck. Alternate. Okay, swimmers. And do this without shrugging the shoulder and the neck. Keep that neck and shoulder cap having some space. So I'm moving out width from my lat system. You can go a little wider. And 
and out, all the way out and together. Feel the muscles in your back. Let your upper arms get tired, but don't let them get tight. And release, shake that out. Come up knee level, like so, on all fours. Now, I know some of you can't come up on to your knees. Um, I could say you could build a towel up, you could put a foam roller underneath your, um, uh, your shins and build that up. You also might be able to come off that, you know, if you're on your bed, just come up um, halfway up like so. Do that. So you can come into this position here. So let's do some thread the needle. So I want you to extend, look underneath your arm and bring it up and switch. All right, I'm gonna look under my arm, broaden your shoulders, open your chest and then slow motion. And the goal is everybody always uses their hand to bring it back. I want you to use the, the lap system, the back system, and that outside of your arm, have that move first and the hand move last. Now I'll go back on here. Okay, same thing. So I'm gonna look underneath the bed. That's the way I visualize this. Open the shoulders up. Instead of moving my hand back, I'm going to move my back muscles first. Everything around the outside rib cage. And repeat. Oops, look under. Okay. Like you're looking for your slipper. Sorry, my mic comes off. And repeat. And just really focus. Work with your breath. I'm going to exhale here. Inhale, open my rib cage up as I come home. That can be done either way, because either what, both directions are an exercise for us. Keep your hips as still as you can, don't let them rock sideways. Try to open them up, try to keep your spine very neutral so that you're really using your thoracic system more than anything. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna look for what we do after this. Okay. And let's do one more step. Broaden shoulders, take a breath, hold it there for five seconds because you can really make changes in the way you're doing it. And then instead of pulling it back really quick, go really slow using your upper half. And last one. Take a breath, pull your rib cage apart, breathe better, square up your hips, even out your weight in your legs, and slowly. Bring it back. All right. So we're going to lay on our sides. And um, I'm going to do what we normally do with a Pilates reformer. So you might want to build this up. I'm going to use my arm. I usually have, this thing is pretty cool. This guy right here, ordered it on Amazon, and it cradles your neck and so forth. So I'll use that right now. And so, so if you have a shoulder impingement, shoulder problems, you tend to load it and tighten it to your neck. This works wonders. So I'm going to center my hips back a little bit. Nothing that's, that keeps my back overly tight where my belly pops forward. And I'm just going to lift this leg up. And we're going to go into exactly what we did in the warm-up is kind of pedaling that bike, extend that leg out, and then straight leg back. And repeat. Make sure that you slow it down so that you don't make the knee hyperextend or tighten up. So just keeping that leg up alone is a workout. So, and nothing is impinging in my hips. And then I'm gonna repeat the other way. So I do this a lot on the reformer, not this one. And this is the stretch of the hamstrings without hyperextending the back of the knee. Bend and bring it out and then repeat. And not doing a lot. And anytime your leg wants to go down, just bring it down, come back. 
Okay, or put me on pause. Okay, and I'm going to do about one more. Okay, now how about here? Out to the side and bring it out. Okay. And just again, nice moving pattern, but it starts making the thighs get tired. Same thing here, extend, bring it down. Don't care how high it could be out here. Don't care how straight either. It's exactly where your body feels the muscles, not how tight your knees get. And let's do one more this direction. Look out for popping and clicking, probably less engagement of the abs, maybe tilting too far back or too far forward, or making this move just a little faster too big. Okay, so. And again, you guys need a break? Because I certainly do. And one more time. And make sure you don't keep going where you're tensing up your hip joints. And release, take a break. Okay, and a version of the clamshell, guys. You know, again, pause me if you go, I need more of a break than this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is lift, lower the foot, lift the foot, turn it down, turn it straight, and lower the leg. All right, just a version of that clam. Keep your hips from leaning back or shoulders. So keep your arm in front. So we, let's work it with the breath. And so we're going to exhale, inhale. So open up the side hip. Exhale, balance it on a countertop. Inhale, watch. You need to keep space here and not pinch here because otherwise it will feel tight. Send it back to center and lower the leg. All right. Um, if my leg doesn't lower without feeling pinchy in here, I'll just stick a, a pillow here or a ball. All right. So again, up, lower, work with your breath. Just at least breathe. Repeat on the other way. Take it center and lower slowly. Okay. When I lower, this should be Relaxing or lengthening, it shouldn't tighten up. Up, okay. Foot lowers, holding that clam without leaning back. Okay, rotate into internal rotation, which is one of my downfalls. You'll see me starting to shake up. Take it to center and lower it down. Let's go one more on that one. Again, you can always pause me and do more. Up. Start breathing, guys. Rotate the foot down. Turn it the other way. Okay, no I'm pinching. No pinching into the psoas or flexor. Take it to center and lower that leg. Good. Cross this leg over on your back. Take this leg, bring it across. Bring this in. Bring it back. Bridge up, bring it in, bring it back, bridge. Keep this bridge very square, bring it in, bring it out, bridge up. And one more time, in, down, bridge up. Take this right leg down, see if you could bring it up. Open it up. Open it up. Okay, if you say, oh, no way, then bring it up as much as you can, let it open, then grab it. And let it come back in. All right, so see what the ability of the muscles will do without tensing up anywhere. If it tenses up, please help it. Okay, let's go to the other side. I'm gonna try to face this way, see how that works for the video, okay? Laying on your side, hinging at your hips, 
sending your hips back a little bit, but to the comfort of your natural curve in your back. Okay, sorry about my notes. Oops. Okay, and then what I want you to do is start with extending out like you did a bicycle. Okay. I heard a beep, so I had to check. Okay. And I think it doesn't want me to put my head down too hard. So here I am, I'm pedaling that bike. We did this earlier, but I'm trying not to hyperextend my knees. I just want my thighs to work. My front arm should be forward. I should maintain, so I'm gonna watch that I don't tilt my pelvis and push my lower back into compression towards the back wall. Okay, and then repeat the other way. Lengthen the hams, soften the knee, and extend out. Lengthen, bend, and push. And again. Good. And don't exaggerate so much that you feel all this tension all balled up in your hip joint. It really just should be some fatigued out thigh muscles. All right? Just tired. Round the hip, but not pinching. Let's do one more. Good. What about up? Extend it out and bring it in. Now, that could be a break in between that, you guys. So I can see my left leg is getting shaky right away compared to my right, could last longer. Okay, just a mental note. Okay, just don't let it pinch in the hip. Okay, and same thing, bend, extend, and lower the leg. Now, with this, I'm going to make sure, A, I'm not too far back, all right? I'm not too far forward, because then I can't lift very much, but right in that sweet spot. Also, I am not going to exaggerate my leg. This is just too fatiguing. So I want to just keep that knee where it feels like it doesn't have to tense up for the hip. Okay, and let's do one more, and let's go the other way. And push. Okay. Again, if I'm tensing my hip and trying to stay with me, I would rather have you take a break and pause me. And one more. That's good. And release. Take a break. Oops. I made it beep again. Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, so let's work on that clamshell. Again, if I have some hip um, hip flexor, psoas, and piriformis type syndromes, I probably would put something in between here to have the leg rest a little higher. All right, like a bed buddy even. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to do a different clamshell. So I'm lifting my foot up. Actually, I'm going to lift it up first. Rotate my foot down a bit. Rotate my knee down. Okay, without falling forward, take it to center as if I have my whole leg on a shelf, and then lower it down. So again, I'm going to lift it on that shelf, lower my foot. Just lower my foot will open this up. You might notice that this hip doesn't open up as much as my other one. This is my, what I call my bad hip, but my trying to improve hip. How about that? And lower it down. And again. So balance, okay, here we go. Open this up, this should open, and so don't grip it in, all right? And turn it down, and only where you don't feel like it's tightened up in the hip, take it to center, and this should feel good, all right? If I said this is really hard for me, then I would probably stay with the clamshell, all right? and lower it down. So this is my clamshell. I would just stay where I'm a little more anchored, or a little more grounded. grounded. Okay, last one. Here we go. Oops, here we go. Up. Okay, lower the foot. Rotate, this should be mobile. 
back to center, and lower the leg. All right, how'd that go, guys? So lay down on your back. So again, I'm gonna slowly bring this leg across and my finger forward, and I am going to press this in, feel the stretch in the back of the hip and the side, bring it down, go up into a level bridge, not high, all right? And I don't work it from my back, okay? I'm just trying to keep my spine anchored. And bridge. And lower. And up and bridge. Okay? Work with your breath. Even out your hips, you can put your hands on your hips to make sure that you're not grounding or putting your spine in a very unhealthy place. Okay, I'm going to lower this down and cross it back over. Lower it down and cross it back over and open. Good. And again, hold the stretch or open the stretch or have your hands help you and lower. And let's shake out those legs, guys. Shake it all loose. All right, so I'm gonna come up again. We're gonna grab uh, the tubing, or you could use a towel. The towel I would hold with my hands. I'm gonna use the tubing right now. Okay. You're gonna lay back down on your back. I'm just using this for right now, and my head is back. I'm going to put this around my wrist. We've done this in classes before. Stabilize your core. I'm going to work it on a four count exhale. Push the band apart with your forearms. So if my wrist is an issue, I'll bring this up on my forearms. In fact, it's probably better that you do. And I'm going to work on an exhale here. So exhale, keeping space between my rib cage and hips and long abs rather than over tucked abs. And then I'm going to inhale four counts here. And this, this should all be nose breath. And again, exhale, pushing those forearms apart. And inhale. Again, exhale. And inhale. And again. If your upper arms are shaky, that's a good thing, guys. And concentrate on the breath. And if I would have a towel, I'd be doing the same thing. I would just hold the towel in this position so that my palms are facing in and then I'll pull it apart just enough to frame my body, okay? That's all you have to do, but my palms will be in, so not this way. My palms will face each other, okay? And then four go, guys. This one, I'm taking a few more reps in it. And again, notice one thing about your spine. Your spine is in flexing with the, as you move back, and let's do two more. And then again, work on that breath. And then shake out those arms. Okay, so if I have the towel, I'm gonna hold where my palms are away from me. If I have a band or tubing, I'm gonna hold on to that. Um, band so my palms are away from me too. And then I'm going to pull that apart, get my scapula to move, and feel those shoulder blades come together. All right, really focus on how far you can get the outside of the arms apart without arching your back up. 
and tensing in your back. Feel the shoulder blades move. I can already notice that one shoulder blade of mine moves better than the other. So I'm going to work on the one that doesn't move as well. And let's do two more. And again, get your arms so that they really feel like they're just tiring out. And then take a break. And come and sit up. All right. So I'm either going to use my band or I'm going to use a towel, okay? Either my band or a towel. And you can come and sit up and you can sit up at the edge of the mat. And one of the things that I would, you know, do is A, get myself in a comfortable position. B, I can transfer myself to a chair. Um, or I can work on some leg extensions and some lineups in my spine as I do this. And again, we're gonna work on that lap pull. So I'm gonna pull down, pulling that either towel or band apart and lift it up, all right? And decide to sit in a chair, same thing. Lap pull and bring it up. Now I want you to observe more or less your shoulder blades coming together towards the opposite hip pocket, kind of comes in. And then with your inhale, I want you to observe your rib cage getting broader, all right? Opening up, you know, putting space in your spine, lifting up a little bit, because we don't go weight stack, we can't do this at the club. So I want you to imagine that weight stack lowering and your arms extending and the lats really open up. And exhale. Always notice at the club, when people are doing their lap pulls, that they hold it here for quite a while so they can get that nice spine extension, all right? Because the weight step really opens up that back a little bit more. All right, and then repeat. I wonder how I'm doing time-wise. You know, you guys know me, those of you who know me, I'm never on time. I've only been on time since I've sheltered in place because there is no time to worry about. All right, to the front, guys, shake out those arms a little bit, take a breath, and then the same thing. I'm gonna work with my tubing just so that those of you who are saying, well, I'm working with tubing. Otherwise, I'm gonna do a wide row here. My palms are gonna face down. I know you've seen it in other videos. I just wanna make sure that you get that in. When I bring my arms on this top shelf, if I go too far back, I'm popping my rib cage way out of alignment, all right? And I'm actually compressing my discs in a downward motion here. So I want you to try to keep that level, try to work with the muscles more than how far can I get my spine to arch, all right? So and stay with movie feeling because you don't get to look at, feeling your scapula move out and in. In as you come in, push your hands slightly apart a little bit more, and then forward, get opening your back up more, okay? So it's an exhale and an inhale here. And again, four counts, one, two, three. On my fourth, I push my um, fist out to the two side walls of my fourth one, more than squeezing so tight my back that my rib cage opens up really wide. Okay, one, two, three, four. Sometimes I hold for two, and then I take my inhale just because sometimes I can't think so fast. Exhale, two, three, four, open, and one more time. Open, and release. Also get that, a nice little release. Okay, what I'm gonna do is take my arm, have my hand back. I can do this with a towel, I'll show you that example. Here comes my tricep. I'm going to lift one, two, three, four, and slow my motion, especially for women, on the eccentric load, slow it down. Don't just drop. Slow, slow, slow. Okay. Four to six reps, excuse me, six to ten reps, guys. Keep your spine in the middle. Again, you could sit at a chair or sit on the floor, even though I said everything's on the floor. Don't hold me to it. Keep your head in the middle so I'm not going sideways. Okay. 
upper arm should be getting a little tired, yes? And let's do one more. So I'm exhaling, slowest inhale. Keep breathing in. Keep fighting. And release and let that go. Shake out that arm. I'm gonna go to the other side, guys. I'm gonna demonstrate with the towel on this one just in case you don't have any bands there. Okay, so same thing. Here's my towel. I'm gonna send it up. Slow, 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 slow. Again, up, slow motion as I go down. Exhale up, feel that tricep, my triceps doesn't take much anymore for my triceps to kick. Again, head steady, don't lean sideways. I shouldn't be on one cheek. I really want to stack my disc, wrap my rib cage a little bit so I don't pop it out and lean on my lower back. All right, level my head. Keep the hard part for me, keeping the ears over the shoulders instead of in front. Okay, so, and getting that length in the back of your neck. Imagine this towel and your neck going up. Okay, two more. And one more time, really focus on those muscles, getting that workout. And release and let that go. Shake out those arms, you guys. So um, I'm gonna take all this stuff out of the way and then we're going on to all fours. This can be used with a band or not. If I have hip issues, I have a tendency to tighten up my hips. Let me get a drink of water. I have a tendency to tighten up my hips. I'm also going to look and see how much time I have on here. Say I have, oh, I'm already at over time. Okay. So I am going to have to skip the hips and put that in part two because I definitely have more work to do for you guys. All right. So um, stretch out a little bit, lengthen your body, move around, circle the hips, do the warm up at the end, and I will continue this at another time. All right. Bye, guys.